Hello, hello, good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful Sunday, is it not? It's a beautiful Sunday. So, um, I hope everybody's doing good today. Um, but I wanted to talk about something that I think, <clears throat> a little raspy this morning. I wanted to talk about something that I think is very important. Um, because, you know, I oftentimes get people that want some um, answers or feel some type of way about what they got going on in their relationships or situationships. Let's just call it what it is. Some people are not in relationships, they're in situationships. Some people are in, um, you know, they're in arrangements that maybe aren't the greatest for them or they're in entanglements or whatever there's all kinds of styles of relationships I mean come on we know right so with that said I wanted to talk about something that I think is imperative because I think that we miss some huge huge examples of when we're trying to um, work overtime to have somebody to be your primary lover or your primary um, person in your life or your significant other, your your lover, your mate, your whatever. And so I think it's important that I give you guys something that is imperative that you think about because a lot of times we don't. Peace, Cheryl. A lot of times we don't think about things because we're so focused on, hmm, you know, um, I want to be this primary significant person to, to X, Y, Z. And I feel like I'm on a tread, I'm on a, I'm, I'm, I'm treading very low. I'm not really making uh, progress in becoming more significant in their life, right? We're feeling kind of aggravated because things are going so slow or not fast enough, or you feel like, man, like I'm doing everything for this person and they just don't see me as, quote unquote, their primary lover. They don't see me as their primary focus. And I really want this. I really want this. But but I just, I feel so frustrated because in the desire to have that, to have that primary person, it's it's really frustrating for me because I want that so bad. And so a lot of times we find ourselves tripping over ourselves to help someone to see who we are to them. And so we'll do a lot of nice things, right? We'll buy them stuff, we'll do stuff for them, we'll show up when they call, we'll do everything that we can to make sure that this person sees us as being primary or sees us as being significant or sees us as a potential person to be with, right? And so um, I wanted to kind of give you something to think about because I think Sometimes we're so consumed with wanting to be that significant other in someone's life that we, we force it and we make, we make major decisions and we're not thinking. First of all, let's think about something. When you're at the store, and I can talk about this because I, I, I love to shop. I love to you know do what I need to do to buy things that I need. So let's just say I'm at a store, right? <laughs> and I'm looking for... We'll just say I'm looking for something like, I don't know, we're looking, I'm looking for a shirt or I'm looking for a top or I'm looking for something that I want to wear. And I get to the store and you, you ever seen those mannequins that have something on that's pretty sharp looking, but that's not really what you're looking for today. You're looking more casual. The mannequin is showing you something more dressy. You're just wanting something to kind of go for, you know, just for an everyday outfit. But you see this mannequin and the mannequin's drawing you. So you're, you're. You're intrigued by the outfit, but you're like, I don't have anywhere to go <laughs> to wear this outfit. So I'm not going to actually sit down and get focused on buying this outfit because that outfit, yes, it's sharp. Yes, it looks good. Yes, it moves me, but I'm not, I'm not looking for that right now. I just need something casual so that I can wear it when I need to wear it. And you know, and then that's it. This is how we look in relationships. Okay. Hey, hey, Steph. So this is how we look in relationships, okay? So like I said, example again is I'm at a store, I'm shopping, 
I'm looking for a casual outfit. I walk past the mannequin that's all dressy and formal wear. It looks sharp and beautiful. I'm like, ooh, that is a sharp outfit. I love it, but I'm just not, I'm not in the season for that look right now. I don't have an affair to go to. I don't want, I'm not dating anybody that's going to take me to something that I can rock that in. Listen, I, that's not what I'm shopping for right now. I'm not looking for that. And so this is how we look when we're in relationships, right? So we're in pursuit of a love affair. We're in pursuit of having some company or some masculine energy or, or dudes. Y'all are looking for some feminine energy. So you're looking for somebody that you're, you're wanting to be with. And you see the mannequin that looks real good, sharp, but just not fitting what you're trying to do in your life right now. So that's a prime example of how when we come into the shop of relationships, we see the, the dope different mannequins that's presenting themselves as being a, a, a potential person that we can consider but what we don't think about is no matter how much they're selling that outfit to you you're not buying it <laughs> you're not buying that outfit i don't care how dope it is how sharp it is how good it looks how much it moves you it doesn't matter so most people, when they contact me as wanting coaching, they'll say, I'm not understanding why I'm doing everything for this person. And they're just not, they're not receiving or they're not moving into the direction I want us to go. So why is it I'm doing all of this and I'm feeling like, good morning, Tasha. Why is it when I'm moving into this, why am I feeling like? I'm, I'm, I'm going up against a losing battle because you're, you're doing you. Okay. Another prime example. You know how peacocks, when peacocks are trying to pick a bait, they fan the male, the, and mind you, the male, the male peacocks are the most beautiful ones. So they fan their, they fan their tail and they show you how beautiful they are so that the female peacock can be like, Hmm, okay. Even in animal kingdom, there is a dance. There is a sharpness. There is a, there's a pursuit. Hey, do you see me? Do you see me? And so the, the one making the decision has to be moved by that, but not just moved though. They also have to be buying what you're selling. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So no matter how good of a woman you are to him, no matter how awesome you are, no matter how many times you buy stuff for him, you take him places, you make sure you're good, you're everything to that man. I don't care what you do. If he's not buying that, you're not going to be upgraded to his woman. I don't care what you do because that's not what he's looking for. So we have to get more realistic, <laughs> if you will. When we want to fan our peacock's tail or when we want to get noticed or when we want to be in pursuit of a lover that we find to be pretty sharp you know what i'm saying they, they got they kind of got what i'm looking for you also have to see if you're what they're looking for a lot of times we give and 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 then we're sitting back waiting while we're keeping track of what we've given because okay i've given you all of this so i'm waiting for you to start given to me or or saying i'm yours or whatever i'm waiting come on that's why stuff isn't working right <laughs> because what is the marketplace you're in for lovers you're wanting to be with problem is that you're trying to be in pursuit of lovers that are not trying to be primary lovers in your life does that mean you have to start to downgrade no that means you start to need to you need to pay attention to what and i tell you guys this all the time self-love is key before you try to have a love affair first of all you gotta first have a love affair with yourself that that can't be skipped so let me reiterate that but i'm gonna help y'all today that really want to be in a relationship because i keep getting these inboxes from men and women i want a relationship i want a relationship okay i'm gonna help you today <laughs> so Get your pens and pencils out. We're going to work on this together. First and foremost, you have to sit down and look at what type of person you are wanting to be with. But before you can look at that, you have to first look at what kind of person you are. 
are you clean are you messy are you forgetful do you have certain character flaws you need to work on these are things that you're going to have when you invite another person or people in your life so one thing i understand and have had to kind of challenge myself with understanding is knowing that loving a man and and having him in my life and all of that is totally different than moving him in my home or me moving in with him that's a totally different kind of situation because as long as you can understand that you're going to have to mesh lives and mesh get this you have to mesh habits if you have a habit of keeping things in order and you move in or connect with or decide to be with a man or woman that is not so clean or is not so particular you are going to have conflict no matter how much you love them it's just what it is so you have to look at when you're when you're seeking to find someone that you want to be in a relationship with you have to start to pay attention what are your habits what are some of the things that you are willing to tolerate what are some of the things you're willing to work on with self? And what are some of the things that you want out of your lover so that you can mesh and have a more harmonious relationship? We get in these markets of different men or, or lovers, ladies, and we pick men and we're like, oh, I just love him. He's so sweet and nice and move him in. And then what happens? <laughs> he gets on your everlasting nerve. He's always doing this. He's always doing that. I'm asking him for this. He doesn't do that. Okay, that's because when you were looking at him as a potential love affair or, or as a potential mate, you weren't being honest with self as to what you need when you mesh lives with someone. What's their attitude? How do they act when they're angry? That's huge, people. You guys want relationships so bad, but you don't pay attention. You're not paying attention to how these these lovers that you want so bad how they act when they're angry do they cuss you out do they act an ass are they a, a beast are they beastly are they abusive we don't he just looks nice we vibe well we get along that's not enough to know if that's somebody you want to mess your life with and be significant in your life so you have to start paying attention to the market that you want do you want a man to be more subtle and, and, and more um, calm natured? Do you want a man to be more strong and, and, and fierce with it? Do you want a savage? Do you... We have to be specific in intention. When we want a relationship, since I know so many people are reaching out, coach, I want a, I want a woman. Oh, I get it. But first, do you understand that some women are heavy hitters out here? There's some women that are very abusive. And they will take merely all advantage of your mild natured ways and will abuse it and use it to their advantage and then walk away and have your heart broken. Do you know that? <laughs> a lot of times we don't because we don't think about, well, I don't even know what kind of woman. She just looks nice. She got a fat ass. She looks good. She's nice. She takes me out places. We eat. That is not enough. We got to stop getting so caught up in what someone looks like. And focus more merely on how much does this person match my vibe can we mesh well is what I'm selling there are they someone that's a potential buyer of what I'm selling I'm selling all of this goodness to this man is he willing to buy it or is he just willing to uh, put put a loan on it there's a difference <laughs> we got to pay attention is he a potential buyer when you go to a damn auction you know those that are just throwing up the bid but not really trying to buy it versus those just standing around and looking at what everybody else is trying to do. And then they might throw a bid in, but they ain't really trying to buy it. They're just trying to see, well, maybe I can just ruffle some feathers for a little bit. I'm not trying to buy this particular item. I'm just trying to see how high you'll go. So again, people, you want to know what market you are wanting to deal with. So with that said, if you are a, more of a mild-mannered person, you're more laid back, you really kind of like your peace and quiet, you don't want a rowdy dude that's going to have all his boys and friends and family over all the time 
ranting and raving and into sports, that's going to that's gonna just repulse your spirit. But again, because you're so in need or in want, I shouldn't say in need, you're in want of a relationship so bad, you don't even know what you're looking for. You're just out here throwing yourself out like you throw yourself out for when you're buy, uh, trying to buy a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket. You have to be intentional. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone that is this, similar as much as possible to this. And is this person also also seeking for someone like you? Again, remember, I keep telling you guys, you have to be about your own self-love and self-worth. In order to have about be about your self-love and self-worth, you have to know what you're presenting. I don't know, right? Like, I have to... How am I selling to a man or a potential lover if I don't know what I have to offer? <laughs> but this comes to, this comes down to self-love. This comes down to making sure you know about you. What do you have to offer a lover? And then when you if you so want to decide that you want one, that's fine. Listen, I don't have a problem because you know, because I speak so much about self-love. I think it could be easily misconstrued that I don't want people in healthy love relationships, which is, which is totally not correct. I do. But my issue as a coach is that people spend countless hours seeking to be in relationship with everybody else, their kids, their lover, their parents, everybody else, and have no real true honest relationship with self. And then they wonder why their relationships outside of themselves are all over the place why do you think that is because you don't take time to know you you don't take time to pay attention to what do you have to offer you want to put the dance on you want to show them how pretty you are but you ain't you're broken inside you've been in how many toxic relationships how many trauma bonds how many times have you been in all this addiction you got going on but you're eligible for a relationship no the hell you're not you're not even relationship savvy yet. You're not. So be honest with yourself. Don't fake everybody else out, including the potential lovers you're trying to get with. But again, because we're so focused and hell bent to be in relationships, we can't stop and say, well, actually, I do need to work on me. I do need to work on some stuff that I can fix for me first. And then if I do engage in different people, I can build friendships first friendships first and as I'm learning about self and working on self and healing self and learning about myself I can then engage with other people potential lovers or potential mates that I want to be in relationship with I can do that but at the same time I'm not depleting self to get it I'm not lighting myself on fire to warm everybody else up I'm actually making sure I'm good am I good do I do do I do what I need to do am I meditating Am I making sure I'm, I'm, I'm physically healthy? Am I doing what I need to do for my health and all that? If you're not doing that, then you're not relationship savvy people. Stop. But again, you will think that I am anti-relationships, which is, which is not true. I'm very pro-relationship, but I'm pro-healthy relationships. And I'm pro-healthy love affairs with self first. Because your relationships, be it parenting, be it um, with your parents, be it as a parent, be it in your friendships, in your love affairs, will be so dysfunctional when you don't have a solid love affair relationship with yourself. It's what it is. It's what it is. I'm sorry to give you the news, but the reality is you can't skip that. You can't skip that step. But also remember. When you are in seek of a, a potential mate or a potential lover or who you want to be with and who you want to spend your time with, that's all well and fine. People, I get it. But first, you want to know what in you will match and mesh best with the person or potential mate you're considering. And are they buying that of what your attributes are? Are they in seek of the same in their season of their life? Here's the problem. You can be everything they need. You can be everything they even possibly want. But if they're not in the season for purchasing that, then you're doing all of this selling to them. And they're like, 
It's nice. I like it a lot, but I'm not really buying right now. I'm just kind of in my own thing. I'm doing me. Okay. Then, then at that point, you make a conscientious decision. Does his season or my or her season match the fact that she's more into her self growth or, or more into her self uh, her selfish season or more into what she's got going on? Then you are. Then you might have conflict. It may be you'll constantly feel unsatisfied. You'll constantly feel um, left out. You constantly feel like I'm not gaining anything by doing this. I'm I'm tripping over myself to show everything I have and they're not buying it. So that's why I said stop allowing yourself to get so overwhelmed by wanting to show something to someone and wanting to stay focused on I want this in my life. I want this man. I want this woman so bad that you're starting to get in this so-called emotion that you're constantly feeling frustrated that you don't have what you want. The problem is you're in the wrong market. You're, you're selling to someone that's not buying. That's like me trying to buy something. Like I said, I'm trying to buy a casual outfit and I'm in a formal store. I'm not going to find it in there. So why do I keep going in there to look for them? Why do I keep tantalizing myself and getting myself all into putting it on and trying it on and considering it and, and walking around the store with it when I know damn well I'm not going to buy it. That applies to relationships. We're doing a lot of borrowing of formal wear when we're only looking for casual wear. Stop. It's, it's very easy to get overly consumed with saying, oh, I want a relationship so bad. Okay, but what are you doing? <laughs> I have so many of my clients that tell me that they want a relationship. Okay. I've been told by pastor such and such, or I've been told by this friend or this medium told me I'm going to be in a relationship. Okay. But you got to do something to get in a relationship. Whether they told you that the perfect person is going to be in your life or not, you have to do something. You have to apply. You have to put yourself in place to where you can start to mesh and mingle with potential mates. You can't just do that by saying, oh, so, such and such said I'm going to be blessed with a husband or a wife or I'm going to be in a long-term relationship. Okay, but you got to do something. You got to make some, some steps towards doing some things for yourself to be able to get those potential partners or people in your life to where you can decipher, well, who am I going to choose? People don't just show up in your life when you're going to the going to the grocery store at home, how are you going to find them? Do you know what kind of interest you have? What things do you like to do? Where do you like to go? How do you like to spend your time? You like to go to art museums and stuff like that? Why aren't you in art museums a lot to see if there's potential people that you might be interested in getting with? Why don't you spend time to learn, well, where do people like this that have these interests, where do they go in their leisure time? We don't research what we want as far as relationships, we don't research to see this is what I want and this is what I desire to have in relationships because we only want to spend time Googling about stuff that don't mean nothing. But when it comes down to manifesting a relationship, you got to get intentional. You got to put some, you got to put some time in. It's not just, hey coach, I want a woman. Hey coach, I want a man. Okay, you got to do something. You can't just assume that uh, the UPS guy that brings packages is just going to show up and sit down at your door and say, hey, I'm, I'm the one you've been waiting on. That's not how this works. You have to start being more intentional. You have to start to be more about the truth in your life. And first, you have to start learning the truth of in, in your life based upon you. What's your truths? What are your, what are your bottom lines? What are some things you will and will not tolerate? That would be a great start. What is something you will not tolerate in a relationship? I will not deal with X, Y, Z. Okay. So that, that makes your market smaller. I want this in a person. Okay. That'll make, and I'm not talking now. See, let me, let me put this out here because I know if I don't, you guys will go right back to what we always talk about. I want them tall, dark, and handsome. Let's get rid, let's get rid of that. Or I want her to have a fat booty. I want her to have this. We're not talking about physical attributes. Let's get that off the table because that's not what's going to sustain you long term. 
no matter how much you think that that's important, it's not. So I want you guys to think about the importance of attributes that's going to matter. I'm going to say it again. Attributes that's going to matter to you. First of all, do you know what type of lover you are? Are there certain things you need from your mate that you're considering being in a relationship? What kind of things do you need? I'm not talking about financially. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about what they look like on that. I mean, to you uh, physically. I'm talking about what do you need in relationships? Do you even know? Have you written it down? People, listen. You have to start writing stuff down. You have to start being more intentional when it comes to something like this. You're talking about making, and, and I told you, I get it all the time. Coach, I want to, I want a partner. I want a love affair. I'm tired of being alone. Okay. Well, what are you writing down? What's your intentions? What do you want in a relationship? And then you need to also know, well, certain things I, are my bottom lines. I just can't tolerate. Okay. Then you need to write those down. Be more clear about what it is you want and need because as you as you grow and become who you are in your supreme being and self, you'll start to see, okay, this is what I really need. And like I said, I'm not talking about what he looks like or how tall he is because that don't mean a hill of beans long term. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is how am I treated? Look at that first of all. How do you want to be treated first? A lot of times people will treat us a certain way and we'll let it happen and really not agree with it. Mm -hmm. Because we like them so much, we'll just let them treat us any old kind of way. We'll be that doormat, right? We'll do whatever they want, right? Because we want them so bad. We'll do whatever they want us to do, right? Okay. Well, that's unhealthy. That's an unhealthy thing. So you need to know what's your bottom lines. What are, what's acceptable behaviors for you in your relationships? What, what do you really accept as being very healthy to you? Because see, remember when you add a person or people, because I know everybody has different relationship styles. When you add someone into your life, you have to have in your mind what's acceptable behavior and treatment. This is basics, people. You have to know, well, I, I will accept, you know, some bad days or some good days or things like that. Um, and then you have to say, well, there's certain things I will not tolerate. And it is okay. You have to set up boundaries. You have to set up the tone where I agree with certain things being okay in my relationship. But then also you have to remember that when you are in these dynamics, people change. People evolve and become different throughout the years. Like, you know, they might be one way, one minute in the beginning, real touchy-feely, huggy, lovey on you, and then you may not even be together as much, or you may be not as affectionate as you were in the beginning and be like, well, what? I really needed that. I really needed that affection to stay where it was in the beginning. And this is why most relationships don't last because relationships, we evolve and change constantly. So if I don't know, I'm in a relationship with a man and I don't know, he needs me to tell him I feel him, I love him, I, I'm, I'm about him, or he needs me to hold and coddle him or, or give him words of affirmation, or he needs me to you know give him certain amounts of attention or something. If I know that ahead of time, then it will help the relationship to expand and grow without it being so restrictive, if that makes sense. So we have to be mindful as to what our needs are. What kind of treatment do you want? Basics. Just basic. I'm not even asking y'all to do a whole assessment of the person. I'm just asking y'all to know the basics. Because the reason why, when you're crystal clear here in your mind of what I will and won't tolerate, as you stay in the in the um, flow of the engagement with someone, you can start to see, oh, they're they're not perfect, but they do do this or they do that, and it it doesn't bother me or it does bother me. Does that go up against what I said I want treatment wise? You got to put the time in. 
Have I had enough time in with this person? Have I seen them sick? Have I seen them angry? Have I seen them upset? Have I seen them frustrated? Have I seen them hurt? Have I seen them sad? Have I seen them go through a season? Have I seen any of those things? If I haven't, then I'm very limited as to what I can do when I'm trying to mesh into that person's life or people's life. And these are things we need to be mindful of. Again, you have to know. Well, and then after all of that is clear, you have to then sit down and say, hold on. We match on these areas. I will be patient for these areas to improve. I will not tolerate certain areas of this. So when you have that clarity, you can, you can actually be more crystal clear as to what you and that person can grow into and evolve into all, all, all natural, of course, that can evolve into. And you'll find like, oh, you know what? This is cool. This is cool. I, I get along. But just because you get along with someone doesn't mean that they're your life partner. It doesn't. You can just be awesome and cool, great friendships and stuff. It might not be your so-called significant other. It may just be somebody that is, is, is very important in your life. But it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be your primary person forever or whatever we want to call it, right? Till death do your part or whatever. So we have to be mindful that once we sit down and we really look about what is it that I want in a significant person, because I keep getting people inboxing me, hey, coach, I want a relationship. Hey, coach, I want a relationship. And I'm like, okay, but again, you have to start with self, but okay, let me just cue you guys in. The number one thing you need to be thinking about if you want a relationship and you want one long term, because it's okay to have several relationships that are here and there. You know what I'm saying? You have several relationships. That's your call. I'm not here to judge. But those of you that want long-term relationships that's lasting, you need to know, number one, what is your treatment that you are seeking to have in a long-term relationship? How do you want to be treated? This is so important. A lot of people don't know what, good morning, Charles. A lot of people don't know what they want as far as treatment is concerned. They don't know what they like in a relationship. They just, I just want a relationship. Okay, but what, what do you need in that, in that realm? What do you need in that realm? Do you, do you really want to cultivate a relationship that is something that you feel depleted in? Like I said, when you're in a relationship and you're chasing, chasing, chasing and wanting to do everything for that person and they're not selling that, that's very lopsided. Hey, Jay, that's very lopsided. When you have a lopsided relationship, they don't last long. <laughs> or even if they're physically still in each other's presence, they're not really together. They're just, by, by, by uh, I would say, normalcy, people see them together and assume they are, but they're really not together. There's a lot of people married and they're just not, just by name. They're not really married to each other. Because of why? Well, because there was not a clear understanding as to what I want as far as treatment is concerned. Once I know that, then I can expand. We can expand more because we're having conversations of, you know, I really like to be treated like this. And I'm not talking about how much they spend on you. I'm not talking about what they buy you. I'm not talking about anything. I'm talking about what do they do in your presence when there's nothing but you and, you and that person. How are you treated? Well, they, they engage with me. They spend time with me. Of course, Tasha, yeah, like a lot of couples, they're just in a relationship, but they're not really, they're, <laughs> there's no intimacy. There's no real lust for each other. There's no real, nobody's really talking. They're just in a relationship, but they're just not, it's like, I don't, I wouldn't prefer that personally, but there are some people that are like, well, I have a relationship. Okay, but this is why I say as your coach, when y'all call me and say you want a relationship, this is why I make you get specific. I tell you in, in your coaching session, I don't mind to help you to get a relationship, but first we need to get specific. How do you want to be treated? Number one. <laughs> and, and, and then, does the way you want to be treated match the way you treat you? I'm just saying. Do you treat yourself that kindly? 
Because I know when I ask somebody, well, well, how do you want to be treated in a relationship? Oh, I want to be catered to. I want them to spend time with me. I want them to call me all the time. I want them to spend all this time with me. I'm like, okay, but do you treat yourself like that? When's the last time you, you spent some silent time in meditation? When's the last time you did something for you that you really wanted to do? Something you wanted to do, not somebody else. But how many, how, how many times recently have you done something you yourself really wanted to do? How many? And they're like, well, I don't know. That's because you're not taking en enough time for you to do you. <laughs> I go out all the time by myself. I might say, hey, I want to get something for me. Or you know what? Do you realize how short life is? I'm going to ask y'all that. Do you know how short life is? Especially when we don't really live in the now. We spend a lot of time being here physically, but we're in tomorrow or yesterday. I got to do this tomorrow. I got to do that tomorrow. Or, man, I really wish I still had this. Oh, I really wish I had that. I sure miss this. I miss that. Or I really can't wait to get this. I can't wait to get that. You're not here. You're not in the present. So how do you know what you really, really need when you're not really, really present in you? You have to be present in yourself. And then you have to say, well, what do I want in this moment right now? What is it that I really, really want? What is it? Once you do that, you're like, okay, I want, I would like to get some, we'll just say, for me, I love cheesecake. Prime example. I love cheesecake. Went to the restaurant. It was my birthday week. I had a ball. I said, hey, I want some cheesecake. Let's get that. Let's get that started. Now, it may seem like that's huge. I'm sorry, small, but it's huge for me because it's something I want. And in this present time, I'm going to get that. Right. So I don't have. So tomorrow I won't have a ponder or a regret like, damn, I should have got that cheesecake yesterday. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have got that yesterday. Or I should have, you know, I haven't really spent any time with myself and got me something I've really been wanting to get. You know, when I when, when it was my birthday week, I, I, I said to my son, I said, you know what I want? He's like, what, mom? I said, I want a pink drill. He's like, really, mom? <laughs> That's what you want? Like, yes, I do. I think that would be so cool, like to have my own drill and all this. Think I didn't get it? Oh, I got it. I got it. So why I'm saying that is we have to do beautiful things for self often more times than not because life is so precious. You never know when we're going to leave here. So we have to be excited about living and being in the present in the now and tapping into what we want. Now, with that said, when we don't do these kind of things for self, we expect. <laughs> Jake so silly you know that was a picture Jake right that is not mine I wish let me tell you but I that is one of my buckets those are one of my the Lambo is on my bucket list just to let you know if I don't get it myself my son's probably gonna buy it for me but that's that's on the bucket list but um but what I'm saying is so when we really sit down and say this is what I really really want and what I really really need we tend to sit back and say oh with me needing these things and wanting these things and really appreciating when we do get these things when we're in a relationship we put less pressure on the significant other because now they're like oh you're doing it for self and you're really enjoying it yes i love being where i'm at i love having this moment of truly appreciating myself because let me tell you something nobody knows what you want but you and when my dad told me that years ago i was young when he said it nobody really knows what you want but you I thought, you know, you are kind of right. Nobody will know what I want unless I tell them. So then I was like, but if you know what you really want, go get it. Go do it. You want to go on a vacation? You want to listen, stop. Stop waiting on somebody else to do it. Go do it for you. And in your doing of something, this is why I tell you guys all the time. When I coach my clients, I tell my clients all the time, do certain things. It's vitally important. We always assume here's where, here's where prayer and meditation and any type of spiritual 
actions go in vain is when you really truly do not sit down and start taking step by step by step by step processes to get what you want. You want a, re a really, I really want a man. I really want a man. I want a da, da, da. Okay, you guys call me all the time saying you want relationships. Why are you not doing something towards making that happen? Only you can. I can give you, I, listen, I'm your coach and all, and I can, you come to me with an empty tool belt and I start giving you the tools to use and all of that. But even after I give you the tools, you still got to take the tools out and use them. <laughs> I can't. I'm not a matchmaker, no matter how much I love y'all. I can't be like, okay, so you can go with him and you can go with her. No, that's not how this works. You have to start being more intentional about what you want in relationships. And I know y'all call y'all call me a lot or inbox me or, hey, coach, what do you think about this? I, I kind of like this woman, but I don't know what to say to her. Listen, if you really like her, why are you calling me to help you? You know what you need to do to get over there. Well, I really don't. Okay, so we need to sit down about manifestation. You really want something or someone in your life, then there has to be some intentions. And then there has to be action. We have to stop thinking that prayer is all we need. <laughs> hope is all we need. No, hope plus action. What is prayer without works is I'll let y'all finish that. Prayer without works is what? You guys tell me what it is. Come on. One of y'all, I know y'all know the answer to this. Come on. One of y'all tell me what prayer plus works. When prayer and works are not being in, 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 in sync and doing, you're not doing something to what you're supposed to be doing to get something, what happens? It's dead, people. It's dead, people. Yes, Jake, dead. And what is death? What is dead? It means it's not happening. I don't care what I don't care what pastor told you your, your husband's gonna show up, what what spiritual leader told you that. I don't care who it is. If you don't put your own intentions and purpose and focus on what you want in your love life, it's gonna continue to look like this. Whether you believe it or not, keep sitting in the hope hope and in the weight of that. Now, I'm gonna wait. Then I'm gonna hear from you again in the next couple months saying, man, coach. I still don't have her. I still don't have him. Because you're not doing anything to get him. And first it starts with you. Love it on you. You have to do this, people. I'm trying to get y'all to see how important it is. Get over there at my... Listen. It's so important. I, I love all of you. And I know how much you guys struggle with not having a sexual partner or having loneliness. And this is what causes us so much inner turmoil or torment torments inside is because we're sexually frustrated and then we're extremely lonely because we don't have anybody to sex or anybody to talk to or anybody in our presence to, that we're attracted to that we want to be with okay i get it but first you have to focus on what do i need to do how do I find the market of, of women or men that I want or would be attracted to or that can bring me the best type of relationship I so desire? You got to start with you first. I'm just saying. <laughs> Listen, I'm just telling you, you have to be the one to do the work. You have to be in intentions and you have to stop thinking, well, it'll happen. That's You're taking a chance on your love life? Who does that? Why, why would you sit in the hope and wait of a relationship when you have to be, you have to start putting forward steps to making that, that type or style of relationship that you so desire to happen? I'm just telling you, you're not going to get it just by hoping and wishing, honey. That's not how this works. And you all told me, Jake and Tasha, I saw both typed in, it's dead. So that's what your relationships are, your so-called desire for relationship is going to end up being dead if you don't beat them dead to it. You're either going to die what, hoping and wishing for it, or you're going to get up and start making some moves. I love cars. I love this. Are you seeing any women around that love cars too? If you don't, or if you if you do, start to get yourself in the circle of people that do and love things like you like in love. 
Get yourself in the marketplace, people, to get what you want. We got to stop all this humdrumming in life. Tomorrow's not promised. <laughs> stop it. Stop it. We got to stop. And if I get another call or another inbox about wanting a relationship, I'm going to send them over here and tell them, you need to watch this video. Make sure y'all tag your friends and tag your, your all. I know y'all know somebody in the misery. They're, oh, 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 must be nice. You have a relationship. I don't have nothing. Well, you're not going to. Everything that we do constitutes what we, what we have. It's what it is. If you open your eyes up every morning to your life, okay, because that's a gift. When you open up your eyeballs in the morning, that is take one for that day. Take one. You open up that your eyeballs to this life, and you're looking around, and you're like, I don't like none of this. <laughs> I don't like waking up to nothing in my bed, no man, no nothing. I don't like waking up to all this crazy going on in my life. I don't like none of it. Change it. You first have to own that first instead of just going in depression. Well, I am what this is. No. When you open up your eyes to your life and you see you don't like it, change it. I'm just telling you, only you can make the changes. As long as you sit there hoping and wishing and hoping that this will change and do nothing about it, it'll remain what it is. And you will remain miserable. And you will remain un unfulfilled. <laughs> Just keep it real with y'all, man. Love you guys to death, but I can't I can't lie to you. You don't like the way you... Oh, every, and, I, and I did a video on this a long time ago. I talked about our life is our own movie. We, when we open up our... And you know, when we first open up our eyes in the morning, we look around. Well, what do we see? Oh, I don't have this. Oh, I don't have that. I want this. I want that. Oh. How do you think your day's gonna be looking like that in the morning? But when you in, when you wake up in the morning, you look around you're like, Whoo! I got everything I want. <laughs> I got everything I need. Hell, I got me. Hey, I got breath of life. Shit, in my bathroom, I put on the wall in my bathroom. Each day is a new beginning. Each day. I told you I have words everywhere in my house. Each day is a new beginning. So there, I don't wake up to that misery. I don't wake up to that sadness. That, oh, I don't have anything. I don't have this. I don't have that. Why though? Because I sit back and I look at what do I have? What do I have control over? How do I fix this? What is What in my life do I need to critique? Do I need to fix? Who's in my life? Are they, are they a, a beautiful push? That I need to move what I'm created to do. When you open your eyes in the morning. You need to hear that movie director in your head going. Take one. Let's go. Get out of bed. Let's do it. And you're looking like. I mean I'm the main executive producer of this movie. But I'm not liking what I'm seeing. <laughs> I hate getting up in the morning. All I see is the same old this. Change it. And I also want to say something because I think this is important. You got old stuff in your house where it still has old energy from old relationships. I'm talking about old stuff. Stuff that carries the pain of old relationships. You still got that stuff in your house? Get rid of it, man. Get rid of it. You can't start something new if you're still holding on to that old stuff. And I'm talking about, listen... It's so funny because I can go back to this. This is this happened to me like maybe about two two years ago when I had done a garage sale. And I had an old jewelry box that was given to me by an ex. <laughs> you know, I didn't realize that that damn jewelry box had so much pain attached to it. I'm talking about 20 years of pain that was attached to that item. Regardless of if I realized it or not, I had to get that damn thing out of my house. I didn't realize that the memories that we carry or that we went through, I took that item from house to house to house. Didn't realize that that stuff has energy. 
gifts from ex-lovers that you know gave you so much pain get rid of that stuff stop it let it go that stuff will hold energy from stuff that happened to you way, way back when you're like man i still have that same pain from this you know because we can look at something and we can go back so quick the mind doesn't forget we can go back to an old picture old photograph old things old items and we can touch it and feel it and be like i remember like i remember what i went through with this or whatever get rid of that stuff hurry up and get rid clean your house out of that stuff trust me i didn't realize it until i did it myself and i was like this is the last item that i held on to for 20 years of pain that i kept carrying into every house and i said i gotta let this go this can't be in here gotta go out 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 somebody else can have it <laughs> i don't want it no more i wanted to mention that because also we have to pay attention to what we have in our homes it's very important it's very important. I hope I gave y'all something today. I want you guys to heed what I'm teaching today. You can only make your life what it is. So I want you to also think of this. What your life is right now is because of choices you've made to get it here. You're either proud of that life or you're not. But today you can make a decision that, okay, I'm tired of waking up to this. I want something different. I want something new. I want something more. I want to make some changes. I want, and there's nobody on the planet that can change your life better than you can. And in doing that change, all you got to do is say, okay, this is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And this is where I, this is when I open my eyes up in the morning. It says, take one. I'll know exactly that I am where I want to be. I can look around my home, my life and say, this is it. This is the piece I'm looking for. This is what I want. This is what I like. This is how I like my house to flow. This is how I like my life to flow. This is how I want my love affair to look like. This is how my kids and I are relating to each other. This is how I'm treating my elder parents. This, all of that stuff comes from you making a choice today. Opening your eyes up and saying tomorrow, when you open up your eyes at, at, in your bed, when you wake up, you just be like in gratitude. I appreciate where I'm at right now, but I want to make some changes to it. And that is okay. That is not telling God you're not appreciative. Just say, God, I, 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 have grat I am in gratitude for what I have, but I'm ready to make those changes. I, I want to have certain things in my life. And in that decision, you will get it. But you have to change it. You have to make the steps. You can't wait for somebody else to make the steps for you. That's the challenge. Again, as a wisdom coach, the hardest part for me is getting people to take steps. One step at a time. One step at a time. Because like I said, you come to me with the tool belt empty. I give you the tools. I give you the courses. I give you the, the, the advice. I give you the coaching. I tell you what to do. And you load your, to to <laughs> load your tool belt up like Bob the Builder. Y'all are loaded up with tools. But what good is it if you're not going to use them? This is my this is my biggest dilemma as a coach. I don't mind giving the tools, but I need y'all to use them. I got listen. I got courses out here. Y'all don't take them. I, I make y'all do certain things. And, oh, I don't want to have to read nothing. Well, how do you think you're gonna grow? You have to take courses to make these moves get better. I have a course called Learn to Earn, Learn to Unlearn, and you guys him and haw and oh, I don't want to do a course. Okay, why don't you want to invest in you? Why? But you want a love affair. <laughs> it doesn't, it does, it'll never compute to me. I have done more courses than probably the average woman. I have taken courses. I have done all kinds of stuff because I wanted to learn for me. I wanted to do certain things. I wanted to become something. I wanted to be some something that I could be proud of when I leave this planet. And you guys can do the same, but I have courses right now. Learn to unlearn, mastering your feelings, awakening your gifts. All of these courses are sitting there. When I tell, when I tell my clients to come in and take these courses, they're like, oh, I got to do courses. Yes. I'm giving you the tools, but you got to use them. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, people. Just like you want a lover, a lover and a love affair, but you don't want to do inner work. That don't make sense. 
<laughs> you're going to have a fucked up relationship. This is what you're going to have. Or you're going to have those loveless relationships like I talked about earlier. Those relationships where you're just name only. Oh, I'm missing such and such, but you're miserable. I'm out of here, guys. I know I have talked your, ear, your ears off, but listen. If you guys have not yet joined my group, Teachable Moments, you need to get your buns over there and join the group. You will have different opportunities to learn and grow. Teachable Moments group, we are getting ready to do some dynamic stuff. I'm getting ready to have all kinds of new stuff. I can't tell you everything yet. <laughs> but on the Teachable Note Moments side, we're going to be working on chakras. We're going to be working on healing and focus and doing some stuff. Teachable Moments is going to make you say, oh, okay, so I take this. So this chakra isn't as sharp as it should be. Let me take these tools and apply them. Teachable moments, the, the people over there, they're going to be on some other level shit because I'm teaching them it's okay to have a beautiful love affair, but it ain't going to do you a hill of beans if you're not doing for you, breaking, o breaking open your chakras. Do y'all know what chakras are? You better get over there. I'm telling you. You better <laughs> listen. Teachable moments, we're going to have some deep stuff. We're going to have retreats, workshops, online learning we're gonna have book club listen i can't even give it all to you yet because we're in we're in the middle of the design right now listen y'all ready <laughs> y'all ready to do the work <laughs> you ready to do some work you ready you ready to do some real work like i said i could be your coach all day love all of you a lot of you have called me, talked to me, had coaching already. A lot of y'all already my clients. So you already know what it is. But for those of you that are not my clients, listen, I'll give you some bomb ass tools you can use. You can get that power drill in your life and start to drill in some shit. That pink drill that I just bought myself for my birthday, you can have one of them too. In your tool, in your tool belt, messing with me. But you gotta use it. <laughs> you gotta you gotta use the tools I give y'all. You can't just sit there and say, oh, that's so, that's so nice. Coach Carla and Nicole, I'm so thankful you gave me these tools and sit them in your basement and don't use them. And then come crying to me later. Oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't do this. I didn't get that. I'm like, did you use the tools I gave you? Oh, I'm supposed to turn it on and plug it up and use it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? What are you thinking? Listen, tag your friends, get them over here, get over to Teachable Moments, and get a, become a part of that group. It's dynamic. It's me and Coach Shelsey. We're about to go all the way in on helping you guys to do the work you need to with your chakras and getting them. Listen, I can't give you a lot, but I'll just tell you. Coach Shelsey and I are about to turn it up. And when I tell you about to turn it up, we're about to turn it up. We're going to have retreats, workshops, all kinds of cool stuff. But again... If you guys don't want to do no work, then you don't want to come over there. <laughs> you don't want to come on. Y'all don't want to do work. That's not for you. It's okay. Just keep watching my lives. But for y'all of y'all that's ready to roll y'all sleeves up and get busy on yourself and do some work, come over there. Teachable Moments. I will put the link in here to be a part of that group. Man, it's dope. It's dope. And we're going to be going in. I have, I think we're going to start launching some stuff probably March. And it's going to be um, enrollments and stuff that start in March. And it's going to be some early bird pricing and stuff. So y'all got to get over there now. Because if y'all wait till after March, we close up the enrollment after so long. So again, listen, we're about to... Oh yeah, Tasha, I'm going to have the link in here. You guys can join. Listen, we got to start getting serious, man. Life is too damn short to be worrying about what we don't have. You already have the beauty. You already have the final final say in your life. The problem is a lot of times we believe that we're the beneficiary of our life. Our life is this and we just get what we have because it is. But actually, we have more power in our life than we let on and let other people to realize. Trust me, I'm telling you, once you start putting, listen, once you start loving on you and taking care of you and looking out for you and making sure you know what kind of treatment you want in your relationships, you can't have anything but positive after that. 
You can't have anything but beautiful unions after that. You can't have anything but the best type of, I would say the best type of fulfilled life that you deserve. You feel what I'm saying? Is that making sense? <laughs> you guys make sure you share this video. I'm telling you, I done went in and it's, it's, it's a Sunday morning, honey. And I am, it's 1049 in the morning. We up and I'm all energized. I'm going to have to go get me some meat. <laughs> I've been talking a while. But I just want y'all to know, I love all of you. Make sure to share this video. And like I say, get over there to Teachable Moments. Become a subscriber. It's going to be some dynamic stuff coming up. You guys are going to love it. Um, but it's about investments in yourself, man. You got to do the work. You got to do the work. I don't care even if you have a beautiful relationship right now. It's fine and well and dandy right now. But once you go through changes and stuff, how do you sustain that love? How do you sustain that great relationship? It doesn't just happen. It takes work. <laughs> and not work on the relationship, but work on self. And removing them to making you happy. This is where the real true stuff is. I just gave y'all a gem. That's a gem right there. Y'all need to. That's a gem right there. Did you hear what I said? Y'all better, better replay that and watch this again. Like I said, you really want a love relationship? You want the power of good, wholesome, dynamic fulfilling life you got to sit back and say hold on a minute if i am in a good cultivated engagement and relationship with someone the best way to preserve that relationship is by loving me and taking all the pressure off of them to do that Whew. listen share this video all of you share it if you just got here go back and watch the replay it is a lot of fruitful information trust me you will take less pressure off of your love affair when you love you. And your lover will be so thankful that there's all that pressure that everybody else is having on their mate isn't present because you, you love yourself enough to be like, babe, I don't need all that. I'm good. <laughs> Let's just mingle and relate and love each other. We ain't got to do all that. It's a whole different energy. Trust me. Like I said, get over to Teachable Moments group and, and request to be a part of it. And once you do that, then you will get to know a little more about it because I'm going to be starting, to, like I said, open enrollment for for our um, different things coming up will be probably in March. So I'm so excited. Can't wait. Love you guys. It's Carla, Co it's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Steph Cat. Have a great day, guys. Bye.